In April 2006, my nephew, Louis Patrick Cuomo, was diagnosed with a rare but aggressive form of brain cancer called medulloblastoma. A beautiful, energetic baby boy with big brown eyes and the biggest smile you've ever seen succumbed to this disease in just six short weeks. Louis was 18 months old. Right now, cancer remains the most common cause of death due to disease in children. Why haven't we done better? I submit to you that I think the generation of cancer medicine is divided. Where researchers around the globe are working in silos instead of in collaboration. Before becoming a professor, I heard all the stereotypes about the incoming class. They're lazy, entitled, self-centered, oversensitive, and underprepared. However, the lens through which your brain views the world shapes your reality. And the truth is, all students are intrinsically different, regardless of the generation. I like to think of them as fingerprints or snowflakes. And maybe it's fitting that Gen Z, the current students enrolled in colleges and universities across America, are known as the snowflake generation. But this uniqueness, this is how they learn. This drive, passion, and curiosity is going to shape the world in which we live. It's fair to say that in the last 10 years, we've witnessed the start of a scientific revolution, the era of genome and personalized medicine. We know more about humans now than ever before. And we're able to answer the question that's been so pressing for so many years. Why do I have cancer? And this information is also pretty staggering. In the dawn of this revolution, we know of perhaps 40,000 unique mutations affecting more than 10,000 genes. And about 500 of those genes are bona fide drivers or causes of cancer. And this is especially true for tumors like the one that Louis had, medulloblastoma, a cancer found in the stem of the brain, or what I would like to call grand central terminal in its connection between the brain and the spinal cord. Yet comparatively, despite all of our advances, yet comparatively, despite all our advances, line, what? We have only about a dozen targeted medications. And more commonly, cancers are treated with surgery, radiation, and chemotherapy. And this inadequacy of cancer medicine really hit home when Louis was diagnosed. We witnessed firsthand the devastation that this treatment can cause. No one should have to endure that, especially a child. And you might fairly ask, like we did, why couldn't we do more? Or how can we do better? And the very unsatisfying yet scientific answer is, it's really hard. That for whatever reason, we've entered this space in the language of medicine that's called untreatable cancers. It's kind of like a black box. But for me, that's like calling a computer unsurfable or the moon unwalkable. And so we've made slow progress. But I believe that we can and will do better. And I think Chen Z. I think you guys are going to do it. Their social media, technology, savvy selves are more connected now than ever before. And it's these connections that are going to be needed to solve the inadequacy that has plagued cancer medicine for so many years. You see, right now, we live in a polarizing world. And cancer medicine Actually, all medical research suffers with polarization. I grew up an athlete, 
I played soccer through and beyond college. And if there's one thing I learned, is that you cannot be successful without the help and support of your teammates. In my lab, it doesn't matter what role you play. Graduate, undergraduate, high school students, the faculty, and the staff. Everyone has something to contribute, and all voices are heard and respected equally. We're all a team. As American writer and social activist Helen Keller once said, alone we can do so little, but together we can do so much. Access to treatment for patients shouldn't matter where you live, how much money you have, who your friends are. That's unfair. And we can do better than that. We all should have access to the best treatments and medical practices across the globe, regardless of our zip codes. In medicine, we need to expand collaboration across institutes across the globe, fostering lasting networks and partnerships for change. Academia, industry, we all need to come together in this fight against cancer. We cannot be siloed in competition, but rather united in this battle. As technologies advance, we need to prepare our communities and economies to meet the needs and wants of medical globalization. We are called for reflection, taking deliberate step from reflection to action. It's our responsibility as educators, as leaders, as humans of this earth to aspire to take action. See something, say something, and most importantly, do something. Transformation, unlike change, doesn't focus on a few discrete, well-defined shifts, but rather on a portfolio of initiatives which are interdependent and intersecting. Gen Z students have transformation at the heart of their work and mindsets, and they will reimagine this world in which we live and make it better for our future generations. Cancer continues to be a fatal disease in patients. How many of you in here today have lost someone to cancer or know someone battling it right now? It seems self-evident that if we are to make an impact on patients, we must begin to understand this disease more completely. Being a professor has taught me that not just at Malloy, but globally, we have unique resources in academia with this snowflake generation for basic science research that transcends borders. If there's one thing I've learned in my years of working with Gen Z, is that they have a drive of service to others. They will do anything to support each other and their causes. And I love that. And so I want to thank them for their participation, collaboration, and most importantly, for their confidence in our ideas. They have put their trust in us to educate them. And I don't want to let them down. At the core of Gen Z is the drive to shape a better world. And this will not change, even as everything else around us does. This will be a movement. You watch. And if the movement is strong enough, then we have a revolution, and not just a scientific one. Gen Z is the see something, say something, do something generation. They're the recipe for transformation. So will we cure cancer? <laughs> My answer is Gen Z will do it. They are uniting these generations so that we can win this. And we'll win it together. Cancer knows no borders. And cancer researchers need to come together from all over the globe. And so together, we're humanity against cancer. Thank you.